Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Change of Shift podcast, where nursing meets the internet. I am your host, Sean Dent. The goal of this podcast is to solve problems, review topics, and share actionable information that encompasses the professional and personal lives of healthcare professionals and nurses. Subscribe, download, and listen while we discuss current events, impactful stories, and invaluable lessons from the front lines of healthcare. All right, gang, let's get this party started. Once again, thanks for hanging out with me. So, like every other episode, we're going to do a little bit of a previous episode recap. Our last episode, we interviewed Cody Slager. He is a nurse from Texas. He came onto the show to share some of his struggles in regards to taking on a new supervisory role as charge nurse. Cody had contacted me a couple months ago asking questions in regards to some of the struggles he was having. He was a new nurse. Uh, He's been a nurse for about two years, and he was asked to step into the role of charge nurse and... He was having some challenges and was curious about certain aspects of the job. Learned quickly that not everybody liked being charged and not a lot of the nurses treated him appropriately. And it was very difficult for him to make the appropriate decisions because he found out quickly that, you know, sometimes the best interest of the patient is not the best interest of the nurse meaning that some decisions upset certain people. Cody came on the show, shared his experiences about how he was trained for the position. We discussed briefly a topic that is near and dear to our hearts here on the show about how nurses who are put into leadership positions, nurses who are asked to fill roles of leadership positions aren't actually trained in how to be a leader. Cody shared some actionable tips for nurses out there who are sharing similar experiences like him. New nurses who are embarking on their first time being in charge, being in the charge nurse role. We found out very quickly that Cody is going to be a rising star in this profession, and he's a natural leader. So if you have a chance, go check out episode 25, the interview with Cody Slager. Now on to this week's episode. We are talking about fitness, 11 fitness hacks for nurses while on shift. I know, I know, we've done this a gazillion times, but I thought I'd put a little spin on it and give some fitness hacks for nurses while they're at work. Some tips and tricks that nurses can use while they're on the job. I mean, let's be honest here. Most of our fitness excuses have to do with time management, not having enough time to dedicate to improving our level of fitness, to improving our health, which is very ironic because we as nurses are time management experts, or at least we are self-proclaimed experts. We have to juggle time like the best of them, especially when we're on shift, taking care of multiple patients, having to wrangle multiple patients, medication administrations, change in medical conditions, tests, procedures, phone calls, ancillary services, physicians, family conversations, friends, phone calls. The list is endless. Yet we find the time to manage it all, except managing our health. So I thought I would give 11 actionable steps, actionable tips, actionable hacks to maybe improve your fitness level just a smidge. Let's dive right into this. Number one, you need to move more. And what I mean is you need to move more than how much you're moving now. If you want to improve your level of fitness, you need to start moving more. Something as simple as taking the freaking stairs. 
And I mean, this can be scalable. You don't have to take six flights of stairs on your first go. Just take one flight and then the elevator for the next five. And then maybe next week you take two flights of stairs and the four flights on the elevator. You get my point. Gradual progression, but you need to move more than you were yesterday. Number two, eliminate all temptation. Eliminate anything that tempts you personally. The caveat being that what tempts me is not going to tempt someone else. Some people have a wicked sweet tooth as I raise my hand. Other people have a wicked, uh, uh, what do you call it? Salty tooth. Is that even such a thing? People want crave, crave salty stuff instead of the sugary stuff. While others crave the heavy carbs, the breads, the pastas. Take your pick. This is all about knowing your weaknesses. One of the biggest things you can do to eliminate temptation at work is to not bring money. Leave your money at home. Leave it in your car. Leave it in your office. Whatever you do, don't keep it on your person. I mean, seriously, when's the last time you needed money in your pocket when you were on the floors or working in the office or working in the OR? Take your pick. You don't need to have money on you. I absolutely believe you got to have money somewhere because of emergencies. Maybe you missed lunch. You didn't bring your lunch or the, the vending machine was your only option, which is a bad scenario. But you got to have money. I would just make sure that the money is in large bills instead of single bills because the single bills is the excuse to go roll them on out into the vending machine. Or better yet, just bring a debit card. Number three, challenge yourself, meaning make things difficult for you. When you have to walk from point A to point B, take the long way. Take the escalators, go outside of the building and then back inside the building. Make it challenging in some way. This sort of goes hand in hand with the whole move more, take the freaking stairs suggestion. I'm thinking more specifically when you have to go from one unit to the next or if your facility has multiple buildings that are connected and you got to go from one department to the next to take the long way around. Number four. Measure your progress in some way. And the best suggestion I can come up with for measuring your progress is to park your car farther and farther away from your place of work. Maybe you park it only a, a couple slots away from the entrance. And then a week or two later, you uh, move it a couple more slots away and so on and so forth to the point where your walk to work went from three minutes to 20 minutes. Obviously, you need to plan ahead when it comes to your commute, but you get the point here. Increase movement. Number five. Get some freaking sleep. You need rest. You got to sleep. None of these staying up late, only getting two hours, three hours, four hours of sleep. Old guys like myself, you got to have six hours of sleep or more. Back-to-back -back shifts, things like that. Sure, there's things that are going to complicate this suggestion, but ultimately you got to figure out how to make sure you're getting as much rest as possible. I know, I know. Nurses and rest. What the heck is that? Number six, refuse the garbage and demand healthier gifts. When someone buys lunch, physician buys lunch, or a, uh, an entity buys lunch, demand healthier choices. Don't just automatically accept the pizza party. Don't just automatically accept the submarine party. How about a good hearty salad or something that has little carbs or back off on the carbs? Find healthier choices. Demand healthier choices. And while we're on the subject, the next one, number eight, you need to be prepared. Bring your own food. Quit relying on having to buy food every day. Quit relying on the cafeteria to hopefully have a good meal, a hope, a hopefully to have a healthy meal. 
rare occurrences, my friends. Most cafeteria food, in my experience, has not been the greatest, nor are there many choices. So, how do you ensure that you have good food going into your body? Healthier food choices? You bring the food. Anyone that knows me in this profession, anyone that knows me that has worked with me, knows that I bring food, and I bring lots of it. Gotta have food. And you not only got to bring your lunch, but you got to bring something that's portable to work that you can have somewhere close to you at the bedside. How many of us with a raise of hands have not gotten a lunch on a shift? How many of us with a raise of hands only got 10 minutes to breathe in between one patient to the next, to the admission, to the discharge, helping out coworkers? Take your pick. Once again, talking about time management. If you don't have a full 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes to take a full lunch break, then bring something so that you can eat through the day. Number nine, have a plan. Plan ahead. This is kind of overgeneralized, but don't don't approach your health all willy-nilly and hope for the best. Have a plan, whether that's a 30-day plan, 60-day plan, 90-day plan, six months, nine months, I don't care. I didn't say have a deadline. I said have a plan. Know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Even if it's something as simple as this week, I'm going to take 10 more stairs. Have a plan. This week, I'm going to eliminate one of the 15 Diet Cokes that I have. Things like that. Have a plan. And number 10, which kind of goes along with a plan, is to ask for help. Recruit those who have done this before. Recruit friends that are a little bit healthier than you. Recruit a professional if you want to pay for it. Or go online. There's this thing called the internet. Go check it out. There's... A bazillion free internet resources out there on how to lose weight, what are the best foods to eat, um, exercise regimes, things like that. By all means, don't get overwhelmed by the ridiculous amount of resources out there because if you spend enough time out there, you're going to find a lot of contradiction. This person says to eat breads. This person says not to eat breads. This person says to eat carbs, not eat carbs, slow carb, low carb, no carb, blah, blah, blah. You need to do what's best for you, meaning healthy choices. Do the obvious things, like eliminate as much fried food as you can. Eliminate as much alcohol as you can. Eliminate anything that's carbonated. Things like that. It's pretty self-explanatory. And if it's not self-explanatory, by all means, ask me. I'll be happy to give you a couple tips. And lastly, and this is probably the most important one when it comes to on-the-job fitness hacks for nurses, is you need to drink more water, you need to stay hydrated, and by doing that, you need to bring your own bottle of water, container of water, take your pick. Don't tell me they don't have them out there. They have them out there. And if you're too frugal to go buy a reusable water bottle, just buy a bottle of water at the grocery store and reuse that bottle for a week or two. Not that I would promote that, but you can also do that too. Regardless, you need to drink water. Not only do we sweat our asses off at work, but you have a lot of insensible water loss. The humidity in the air is horrible. If you can think in terms of how dry the air is for our patients, it's equally dry for us. It's equally a challenge for us to stay hydrated. So drink more water. There's no such thing as too much. You don't have enough time during your shift to drink too much water. So don't give me that argument. I don't want to hear I'm worried about getting hyponatremic. Bullcrap. You got time. Get a water bottle. Keep it at your bedside. That's it. 11 tips. Quick and easy. Move more. Eliminate temptation. Challenge yourself. Measure your progress. Rest. Refuse the crap. Avoid temptation. Be prepared. Have a plan. Ask for help. And drink more water. Remember, 
doesn't matter how much you exercise, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. There's no such thing as bargaining and weight loss. The equation of exercise equals food is horribly unbalanced, meaning that there's no exact science on how many calories you're going to actually burn versus how many calories you're actually eating. 7,000 calorie candy bar that you just ate doesn't equal 10 flights of stairs. It's just not an absolute value. So you can't bargain weight loss. You need to move more than you did the day before, and you need to improve your food choices. It's really that simple. That's it. Tell me what you think. Drop me a line. I'd love to hear what you think about these fitness hacks. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my new and returning listeners. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to the show. If you like what you hear, be sure to tell someone. You can find the show at thechangeofshift.com. And you can find me out on the internet at seandent.com. This has been the Change of Shift podcast, where nursing meets the internet. I am your host, Sean Dent. The goal of this podcast is to solve problems, review topics, and share actionable information that encompasses the professional and personal lives of healthcare professionals and nurses. Please subscribe, download, and listen while we discuss current events, impactful stories, and invaluable lessons from the front lines of healthcare. And as always, be sure to check your own pulse first.